Hi everyone. Last year I painted this cute little chick with uh, oil over acrylic for Easter. This year I was kind of undecided whether I should paint a bunny or a chick for Easter. So I ended up painting both together and coming up is my watercolor tutorial of painting a bunny and a chick. But before we get started, if you want to find out how to do this particular chick, I will link the video in the video description below. So check it out as well after you finish this one. I am starting off with the drawing using a water soluble graphite pencil. The reason I prefer to use water soluble graphite pencils is because when I start to paint over it with watercolors, it becomes unified with the watercolors that I'm putting on and does not show any graphite marks like if it would have if I had used a graphite pencil. But if you want to use a graphite pencil, you can use it lightly and in that way it works as well. In case uh, you are scared about drawing and want to paint this uh, painting but do not want to do this drawing, I have a way out. Down below in the video description, I have put in the link to a traceable which you can download and then trace it out on your drawing paper and use that to create your own painting. Not only that, you can use it for a watercolor painting like I am doing in this particular tutorial, but you can also use it for any other medium of your choice like acrylic or oil or even oil pastel or whatever mediums you are feel comfortable to work on. And uh, as well as uh, down below in the video description, I have listed all the materials that I have used for uh, this particular uh, video uh, or rather this particular tutorial. So you can uh, check them out as well. Now I'm showing the traceable that you will find in the link uh, down below in the video description. Um, you can, like I said, you can download it and use it for your own painting. Now on to the actual tutorial where I am starting with wet wetting the whole background. Um, um, please uh, make sure that when you're wetting the background, uh, you're not putting too much of water because I'm keeping the painting upright. So if you want to keep the painting upright, too much water will bleed into all different places. Now at this point, I'm being very sketchy. I'm just blocking in the background with the general lights and darks of green because I am painting like a grassy background. And for the very back of the background, I am, I'm not gonna add a whole lot of details that I'm gonna add in the foreground of, uh, in the, of the grassland around the bunny and the chick. Now, I'm, as I'm moving forward, you can see that I'm starting off with more detail than I have put in the background. Obviously, I will go back to the background in just a little bit and add in more details. At this point, I'm just using different shades of green, uh, some blues, and some yellows as well. And it really does not matter what shade of green or what shade of blue or, or yellow I am using because it all it, mat all it matters is uh, whether you're getting your values correct. That is, the lights and darks are dark enough and the lights are light enough. Now on to the bunny. I am first putting in the lightest layer, which is uh, just a wash with the burnt sienna. After that, I'm coming back with a combination of burnt sienna with a little bit of Prussian blue, which gives me a muddy color. This tutorial is a great example of layering with watercolors and also a great example of how to paint fur by layering with watercolors. What I have done is adjusted layers after layers after layers of paint. And what that has done is that it has slowly gotten the painting to the level of darkness that I wanted to finally achieve. It is very hard to um, get a natural look and yet um, have um, have the kind of dark, uh, very dark um, for texture on a watercolor painting uh, just by painting one layer. So layering is very important. 
However, with watercolors, um, when you're putting subsequent layer on top of layer, they blend together because watercolor, no matter how long they have dried, as soon as you put water on top of it, it gets reactivated. So make sure that you understand that you have to use very light brush pressure when you are putting colors on top of colors when they are still wet. Another thing, important thing to understand is that when to work wet on wet and when to work wet on dry. As of now, I am just working wet on wet. What it does is that whenever I'm finishing off, you can see that it gives giving a very blended look. You can barely see any brush stroke standing out. That is the uh, effect that working wet on wet, adding more colors while the background is still wet does. And at this point, that is what I want. I do not want the brush strokes to stand out already. I want um, it to give a blended look and get to a medium level of darkness first. Onto the bunny's face, I am using a little bit crimson mixed with Prussian blue and added with a little bit of brown. Some areas I'm adding a little bit of paints gray as well. Like I said, the color is not really important. How dark and light some areas are, that is the important thing. Even if you don't use brown and use only paints gray, um, and like you can get your own set of colors that is not important how dark the darks are getting and how light the lights are getting the contrast is what makes the real difference now I'm coming to the bunny's eyes you can see that I added a muddy purple color which I got with Prussian blue and uh, Per, uh, uh, mixed with a little bit of crimson first and then I'm surrounding the whole area with blue mixed with a little bit of gray. The base layer of the eye I am putting in a little bit of brown and yellow ochre combination. At this point I'm being really, uh, till this point I was being really light. From now on I'm adding the dark colors. Once again I am adding darks layer by layer little at a time so you can see that I did not add the darkest layers at the very first go I added very light colors and then on top of that I came back with dark layers now you can see that I'm working partly wet on wet not completely wet on wet and what that does is makes the brush strokes sh show and what that does is giving the texture of the fur, the look of the fur. Another important thing to remember while painting fur is to maintain the direction of the fur. Whether you're using a reference photo or you're using the traceable that I talked about, do understand what is the direction of the fur and put your brush strokes accordingly. Because if the fur goes in the wrong direction that will completely mess up the look if you're going for realism it is very important to understand especially in case of fur and feather painting to follow the direction of fur and feather now on to the neck area of the bunny now once again i'm working in this area wet on wet first and first adding a, the lightest area and then slowly darkening the area now from now onwards till the end of this painting, um, at least the bunny part, is just going to be adding more darks and more and more darks till I get the right level of darkness and get enough for a texture. Now I'm adding a little bit of texture and uh, color to the bunny's muzzle area. I will come back later with some lines marking the muzzle or the rather than opening of the nose the nostril area redefining fur like i said it i will from now on till the end of the painting whenever i come back to the bunny it will be just adding more and more layers till i'm happy with the level of darkness i've achieved with the fur now in some areas you can see that there is still the white of the paper showing and that is kind of important because I some areas I really wanted it to be white but all of the areas that are looking white are not really white some of the areas you have seen that initially I have put in a wash of brown color so understanding that is important to which areas you have to leave white so in this case I would um, ask you to follow the tutorial very closely 
Now you can see that I have kind of reached the right level of darkness for the bunny. But still I'm adjusting to get a little bit more darker in some areas to show the different textures of fur and the different muscles in the bunny's face or rather which areas are more fluffier than the other areas. And I'm really happy with the realistic look the finally the bunny has gotten into. Like I said, it is a matter of patience to put in enough number of layers to get the darks and lights perfected. Um, if some of the areas look a little bit too dark, you can always come back with a layer of uh, gouache and paint over it and get the lightness back. Now I am getting some of the foreground foliage a little bit darker so that it pops up and adds a little more green and yellow to the foreground. Trying to paint a little bit of grass even in front of the bunny's face but not going too wild with it. I don't want to spoil what I've already created with the bunny's face. Now onto the cheek. Chick. I am starting off with the very light yellowish pink shade with the beak and then I am adjusting around with adding a little bit of muddy purple the same mix of crimson and Prussian blue and getting the details of the body uh, of the beak now onto the body of the chick you can see that when I added a lot of water it mixed a little bit to the bunny's um, upper hair as well um, or the, rather the fur as well uh, I will have to go back and readjust that at the very end but right now I will focus more on the chick body and while it uh, while the base yellow color is still wet I will take out some of the middle portions um, and make it lighter and add some of the darkness around uh, the areas uh, of the fur so adjusting lights and darks once again so pretty much all the bunny has fur and the bird has feathers the principles that I follow for painting fur or feather is pretty much the same starting with lights to darks in case of watercolor of course and then continuously adding layer on top of layer on top of layer initial layers are wet on wet and then when I get to a mid-tone mid layer then I let it dry and then go wet on top of dry areas. I'm adding some more detail around the eye and some more feather texture in the body. Now I'm readjusting the bunnies tuft, the things that I'd lost in the past. Now readjusting that. Now you, you can see that once I added the color to the chick body, the surrounding area does not look as dark as it had looked before. So obviously I had to darken it up a little bit more. And that is the final painting. I hope you liked the tutorial. Then give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so that you get a notification every time a new video comes up, which is generally Wednesdays and Fridays in the evening EST hours. Thank you for watching.